Red Brick Media. All quality CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our Dawah work, supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله أمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this chair is really comfortable. I can fall asleep. So I hope you do not fall asleep while I'm addressing this. When I got the bit of information that I should talk about the moment that changed my life, I got, believe me, sleepless nights. I just lie down on the bed and I could not sleep. I was terrified and I'm still terrified. I never looked at my life before. I look at every day as it goes on. What is your target? Nothing, just to live. What are your ambitions? Nothing. If I can utilize my time, go ahead and do it. If not, just, just chill, live your life. <clears throat> so when it came to me that I have to speak about something of my past, I told the brothers, Yaki, if I say, tell you about my past, I have to kill you. It's, 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 it's not something easy. So, seriously, I spent so many sleepless nights thinking, what is the appropriate thing in my life? And I started scanning my life. And I found that there are so many cherished moments that changed my life. But I don't think that they may benefit you, just for the sake of argument. <clears throat> A moment that past when I was like 13, 14 years of age. When I was like 11, I started praying in the masjid, and there was not a single person practicing in my whole family. Not a single bearded person in my whole family. Not a single hijabi sister in my whole family. Cousins and the sisters and brothers and the entire thing. We were, we were like every other family. And that was you know, in the previous century, so it's really old. And I started praying in the masjid, subhanAllah. Until I was 13 years of age, this is where you start to look at the world in a different way. I quit praying all uh, together, not praying at all. And when I was 14 and a half, I was with my brother going to the beach to camp, and he just came from America. So he was disciplined in the way that Americans drive. And if you're in Saudi, you try to drive like Americans or Europeans, you want to die. <laughs> because it's a jungle out there. And you have to be a Tarzan in order to live. That's why we work out in the gym and we do all of this stuff. <clears throat> and it was 11 o'clock p.m. We had like five scuba tanks and a lot of things I cannot disclose. And he was on the left lane. A man is trying to pass him. He's doing like 140. We were driving in a very small car. It's a Fiat 127. Very small. It's even smaller than a Mini Cooper. And my brother would not give way to him because he's on his lane. Why does he have to pass from the left? So the man came from the right and he drove across the road in front of my brother. My brother was offended. He did the same to him. The third time the man passed, he hit us. And we went across the road to the opposite direction. And then the car started flipping and flipping and flipping like seven, eight times. We we're doing 140 kilometers. The car was a total wreck. Nothing happened to the <coughs> scuba tax, alhamdulillah. Because if one exploded, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have to tell you about the sports story. My father told us when we went there that my mother felt it at the same time that that accident happened. And she said that 
there's something wrong, I don't feel good. Alhamdulillah, we, as you can see, survived, at least I did. Little bruises, cuts here and there. Since that day, I did not leave prayer, Alhamdulillah. It's from Allah. So even if you divert, Allah returns you back. If He wishes well for you. And life went on. I went to the university, did all what the university students in Saudi Arabia do, which is all inshallah halal in a sense. And when I was like 22 years of age, a friend of mine came to visit. I didn't see him for four months, and he came with short clothes and a, a beard that is about to grow. And this was a no-no to us. We were hip. We used to wear pants and, and t-shirts. And when you wear a thaw and it's like this, then this means that you have done something wrong. So I was shouting and screaming at him. He was a nice fellow. What are you doing? You have joined the dark side of the force. What is this? And it's, the guy couldn't answer back because he did not have knowledge. He said, Halas, I know that shaking hands with women is haram, listening to music is haram, watching movies is haram. And all what he presented to me is the harams. Because this is all what he knew. So I, in a, sort, in a, in a sense, I gave him help for half an hour and the guy just left and said, Halas, this is all what I have. Master, I'm a master. Another sleepless night. I couldn't sleep that night. I kept on thinking. Everything that he said is logical. Remember, we did not know anything of the Quran, nothing of the Sunnah. We barely prayed. This is all what we knew from Islam. Everything we knew about Islam is prayer, and we know that wine is haram, so nobody approached wine and pork. In Saudi, in Saudi and this is the no nos no wine, no intoxicants, and no pork. Everything else is. And Allah Kari. So I could not sleep. And subhanAllah, that night was a blessed night. Since then, I drew a line and I said, with the grace of Allah, I will not do the bad things and I will do what pleases Allah to, my, to the best of my ability. But this was approximately two years after the incident of Al Haram, of Jihiman. So I did not have anyone around me, we did not have shiuch, we did not have where I live, ulama, scholars, we did not have the internet, we did not have anything, the TV was black and white, no pagers, no faxes, we had telex, telexes with, with yellow ribbons, I don't know if the brothers, but too young to know this, uh, I don't know what the Hussan <laughs> but, so I started to transform into a bookworm, Wherever I go and pray and I see stalls at, uh, 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 outside the masjid selling books, I just collect books and I take them and I read them. And it is Allah's grace that I did not read the Sufi books or the Dini books or the Shia books. Allah Azza wa Jal made me read the Qayyim and Taymi and I did not know a thing about them. But you know, the, 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 it has a link to it, Ibn al Qayyim, Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay. So I started reading Shaukani's book, Nail al from cover to cover. Of course, I could comprehend like 10%. But that was good enough. I read Zad al Ma'ad cover to cover. I read most of Ibn Taymiyyah's books at the time without knowledge, without any guidance. So I had a lot of questions. And the only people around when I asked that Allah also guided me to were three. Shaykh Abdul Aziz al Bas, Shaykh Muhammad bin Sadr al and Shaykh Abu Bakr al Jazari. And I started calling them every single day, like for half an hour to an hour. No mobiles, nothing, landline, redial until you pick up. And I kept a long list every single day asking them whatever I need. And they, mashallah, clarify every misconception that I had. They had the ability to answer questions. And this gave me and inspired me to always answer the questions whenever people ask me. This is an obsession I have.
I mean, it's not an obsession to rule people and govern them, but it is an obsession that I took from them. And that is why my mobile phone is 24-7 on in Saudi Arabia. I get calls from all over. Whoever has a question calls and I answer the, the question. Unless I'm asleep, of course, I turn off. But I answer the question when I'm eating, when I'm working out in the gym, when I'm typing. I get questions on emails. I answer all what I can to the best of my ability because I got this from the <coughs> favorite Shu. May Allah have mercy on their souls and the ones that did not die. May Allah bless his soul, Sheikh Al Bakr Jesari. And finally, after five, six years of just reading for myself, not contributing to anyone, I went to a masjid near my, my, near my, my house and the Imam did not show up. And who do you think they chose to leave? You were the only one because I had two or three years of experience in teaching in high school. But I taught English, I did not teach Islam. So they said, well, you're the only one who can address the masses. So make a khutbah and go. So I went up and I gave a khutbah for a Friday sermon. And one way, for, for some reason or the other, they liked it. So they said, okay, we are removing the Imam, you are the Imam. I said, I don't know how to lead the prayer as an Imam. And my voice is horrible, it's, 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 you can tell, it's like a frog. And I don't have experience. They said, no, you have to do it. And at the time, there was no one. So it was again thrown at me. I kept on preparing for khutbah every single Friday for four hours, just to prepare a 20 minute khutbah. And this, mashallah, changed my life a lot. It gave me some more knowledge than uh, uh, everyone else. But whenever I remember all of these points, and there are so many points, I can tell you about points in the future, but it's not the time. <coughs> whenever I remember this brother who came to me and told him, and he could not respond. And this changed my life from two. I always envy him for the rewards. Because whatever I do, he's getting credit. And he's not, yani, mashallah, a student of knowledge. He's a normal practicing Muslim. But whatever I do, whatever I speak, and I hope that while I'm sharing this with you, that he, inshallah, will get the reward in his life and the hereafter. Wallahu a'lam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم